So this uh, creamy ranch pasta salad is easy peasy. I should have done it this morning to have it in the refrigerator for several hours instead of just a few hours, but better than none, I suppose. All I will need to put this salad together is one pound of the tri-color rotini pasta, and then one cucumber chopped, one large tomato chopped, two, three handfuls of fresh baby spinach, one cup mayo, two teaspoons of ranch seasoning from a packet. Instructions are to boil the pasta according to the package directions, drain and rinse under cool water, place in large mixing bowl. Add cucumbers, tomatoes, and spinach. In a separate small bowl, mix mayo and the ranch seasoning very well. Pour ranch mixture over the pasta salad ingredients and stir until everything is well coated. Chill until ready to serve. I have the one pound tri-color rotini pasta. And then I have the two to three handfuls of fresh baby spinach. It said on the package it was already pre-rinsed, pre-washed. I rinse it again. So I first had it sitting in the colander, but I needed it for the pasta. So there's a couple of paper towels under the spinach there. The one cucumber chopped, the one tomato chopped, one cup mayo, two teaspoons of ranch seasoning mix. And there is all of the ingredients except for the one cup mayo and the two teaspoons of the ranch seasoning mix. And then I will pour the ranch mixture over the pasta salad ingredients and stir until everything is well coated. And I'm glad I took note of what I was adding because I had two tablespoons of the ranch uh, seasoning mix. So I had to remeasure it to two teaspoons of ranch seasoning mix. Now to mix those two together and pour it over the mixture here. So there it is, the creamy ranch pasta salad. And we have had this before. And tonight will be the best beef, bean, and cheese burritos. And I'm getting ready to go ahead and start measuring out my ingredients and get them together and put the um, ground beef into a skillet and cut up an onion and start cooking those two together. Six burrito size flour tortillas and one half cup, it says sharp cheddar cheese, more or less to taste. And then we already have the one pound ground beef on the stove. We will need one small onion, that was like a medium onion. It calls for four to six cloves of garlic minced. That's the kind of garlic that comes out of the, like the jars that you buy already minced. And that is three teaspoons one and a half teaspoon of chili powder, one teaspoon of ground cumin, a half teaspoon of smoked paprika, half teaspoon of salt plus more to taste is what it says, a fourth teaspoon of pepper, a fourth teaspoon of dried oregano, one 16 ounce can of refried beans, a fourth cup of sour cream, a half cup of medium salsa, medium for more kick. And then it calls for hot um, sauce to taste. I'm not adding any hot sauce because Ken doesn't care for hot sauce. And that is my handy dandy Chopper. I've seen other YouTubers use them when they're making their ground beef or any type of meat that they're needing to chop up uh, real fine. I'm thinking I picked this one up from the dollar store. If not the dollar store, it would have been Walmart, but I'm almost sure it came from the dollar store and it works really well. And I meant to tell you, I end up adding um, my own seasons, seasonings that I would use if I were making pasta sauce or chili, such as the salt, the pepper, even more garlic salt, um, seasoned salt, and I think some celery seed is what I've put in there to cook into the hamburger meat. And I've always done that. I've always seasoned 
the hamburger meat while I'm cooking it as well. And that's how fun or how well this little generic handy dandy meat chopper chops up the hamburger meat. So I'm going to put the lid back on it and just let that sit and continue to cook on a medium heat and then I will drain the grease. It's cooked and ready to drain off all of the now fat. The fat, the grease is drained off. I'm going to stir in all of the spices, seasonings, and then followed by the refried beans until well incorporated. All of the spices, seasonings are in. Now to mix it up. Now to add the refried beans. And stir and mix it really well. Now the beans, refried beans are mixed in. Now I'm going to be adding my sour cream and the salsa. And it smells some kind of good. It may not look too great on camera, but it smells really good. Sour cream and salsa now added. Now I am going to be heating this very thorough. Y'all, can I say it just keeps getting better and better smelling in here. Being that these tortillas are already cooked, all I do is, is stack them on a plate. And there's a plate under there. And uh, there were supposed to be 11, uh, 10 tortillas, but there was 11. <laughs> better to, I guess, give too many than too little. But um, they're on a plate and I've already wet two paper towels and I'm gonna lay the wet paper towel over the tortillas and I'm going to put them in the microwave and on 30 seconds or until they're warm all the way through. Just lay my wet paper towel on there and put this in the microwave for 30 seconds and then I get to assemble and them. And what I do is I take just one tortilla at a time, lay it on some wax paper I have here on the island and I will sprinkle the cheese down the middle and then I'm okay. going to take my beef and meat mixture and then put it in the tortilla and then wrap it by folding the bottoms first and then rolling it into a burrito style and then I'll just lay those over into my glass Pyrex uh, dish here but there's going to be the last step and that is I'm going to heat a skillet over there and then I'm going to brown the burritos on both sides just to give it a crispy burrito. And you just heat a large non-stick skillet over medium heat and you add the burritos three at a time. Seam side down and cook until golden. About two or three minutes per side. Now to get the meat. I'll bring it up here on the island. cheese a layer first and I build these one at a time and now I will do the meat down the middle and you can add extra cheese sour cream um, just whatever you think that you would want on the inside of your burrito so there's the first one I'm getting ready to fold the bottom in and I have overstuffed these before so that's a little warning now just take and fold the bottom over here and the bottom over there and then I will just roll it. And I will just continue to build them, fold them, roll them, and put them in this Pyrex dish and then take them all over and then heat the bottom and the tops just to give them that crispy burrito crunch. And I'll do this until I run out of the uh, meat, the beef and bean mixture. And these I went ahead and put it a layer of cheese on top as well as on the bottom. Build it and they will come. And there we have it. It's empty and I did have one tortilla left but it had 11 in the bag when it reads 10. And I probably could have made them a little uh, thicker. Some of them are made them thicker before and all it did was ooze out the side when I was trying to crisp up the burrito. So now I'm going to take these over to my clean skillet on the stove top and I'm going to brown the tops and the bottoms but when I put them in the skillet over there I will put the seam side down just like they are in this Pyrex dish. Seam side down. And there you have it. It's a lot of ingredients in a couple few steps but it's well worth it and I think it might be Taco Bell. So it's the best beef bean and cheese burrito recipe and I will have the recipe um, all the ingredients and all the instructions listed below in the description box. Anytime I share a recipe with uh, 
you all, I will always have the uh, recipe written in the description box for you just to copy and paste. And then I'll just put three over into the skillet at a time like it reads. Brown, this, brown one side, then flip them over and brown the other. And transfer the crispy burritos over to the parchment paper until I'm able to get the Pyrex dish emptied out. And that's where I'll put them. I'll store them back in there. And I'll make up just a small batch of guacamole using a couple of the avocados here. They're just perfect right now. One tomato and probably half an onion and seasoning salt, pepper, garlic salt, and just a wee bit of lemon juice to keep it from turning brown. And we'll have a guacamole on the side for the burritos. You don't have to do this step. This is just if you wanted like just a wee bit of a crunch to your burrito and it's the way I've always done it. So I'm gonna continue to do it. And Lizzie's like, no, I don't want my burritos crunchy. And I'll be like, well then don't eat it. Eat it. Go get a frozen burrito out of the freezer and warm it up in the microwave and eat one of those. <laughs> so says me. Just lightly browning them. I have browned them too much in the past as well. That's how you learn by experience. And there we have it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ooh, me, I can count. Ten burritos. And there she is, guacamole, salsa, sour cream, and I cut one of the burritos open so you could kind of get a look at it. The meat, the cheese, and all the seasonings, and the sour cream, and the salsa all cooked together. And then a burrito. And then the salad.